In my country, we have power outage every day for a few hours. However, I got a solar system four years ago and it is still working well, but the backup time of the batteries are limited when the sunlight is not available, so I decided to make a paddle generator. First, I bought a used bike for 27 US dollar. I found it is not comfortable at all to sit on the saddle of the bike for a long time. You have to hold the handlebars so you cannot use your hand to eat in or playing with your phone. I prefer to sit in on a chair or couch while using the paddle generator. So I start to removing the unnecessary parts from the bike, such as brake, handlebars, saddle, and so on. Then I have to cut the excessive frame by using a handsaw. So this portion is what remains from the bike. Now we need a motor to use it as a generator. Here I have different motors. Most of them needs to rotate with very high RPM to produce electricity. Except this one which is the motor of the washing machine. I bought it for 33 bucks but maybe you can find it for free in the trash. By the way I'm talking about the motor of automatic or inverter washing machine. Not the motors of old washing machine which is useless. It is BLDC motor and it has permanent magnets inside. I connect the three phases to the bridge rectifier so the output will be DC voltage and this LED lamp as a load. As you can see here, by spinning the shaft just by hand, it can produce enough voltage to run in the 220 volt lamp, which is excellent. I got some angle iron to make the frame of the paddle generator and joined them together by using screws and nuts. Then hooked up the output voltage of the generator to a three-phase bridge rectifier and a big capacitor. So now we're done. Let's see the output voltage with no load. If you use this generator without a bridge rectifier, the output voltage will be AC but not very useful. Because the frequency will be not 50 or 60 Hz but it depends on the paddling speed. As you can see here, the output voltage is 300 volt DC. But by connecting some loads to the generator, the voltage become around 209 volts. It depends on the paddling speed. The interesting thing here that it's so easy to paddle in with no load. But when the load is connected, you have to paddle harder. You can see here, I connect different LED lamps to the generator. And some of them run in before than the other. That's because the minimum working voltage of each lamp is different than the other. So the output voltage of this generator is high DC voltage. However, you can convert it to AC by using a transformerless inverter. But for most appliances, it's okay to use DC voltage, such as lamp, TV, and even the blender. The blender has universal motor which works with both AC and DC voltage. You can also charge a battery by using a switching power supply as a charger. So maybe you're wondering how much is the maximum power of this generator. I think this motor can produce up to 600 watts. But as I said before, when you connect the load, the paddle become very hard because the shaft of the motor resists to moving. You can read here that the human body cannot make more than 400 watts. This blender, for example, is 260 watts. I tried to connect this generator to the outlet of my room after isolating my room from the grid power by using the circuit breaker so it could be useful to run in some appliances in my room. However, my ceiling fan is an induction motor that cannot run in with DC voltage. Maybe you're wondering why I didn't connect the generator directly to the paddles instead of using chain, wheel and belt. Because by this method, we can increase the rotation speed of the generator. The ratio of wheel diameter to the pulley diameter determine how fast the generator rotates. This ratio here is 4. That means when the wheel rotate one full cycle, the pulley rotate 4 times as you can see here. I don't recommend you to use very small pulley. Because the paddle become very hard and the belt start to slip. 
please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.